In this video, I'm going to go through step by step how to do the clutch in a Ford Ranger. Now, this applies to pretty much all years of Rangers, but mine in particular is a 2008. It's got the 2.34 cylinder. Just a word of warning. If you got an older Ranger pre-2004, 2005, this job is probably pretty simple. If you got one after that like I do, turns out they made a few changes to the design, the bolt pattern and stuff. It's hard to get some stuff off. A couple bolt, the one bolt in particular on the transmission. If you can find someone to do this job for three or $400 in labor, it is completely worth that. I would have paid somebody three or $400 in labor to do this. No questions asked. The first thing I did here was jack up the truck and get it on some jack stands. Now the safest spots I found were right there under the control arm at the pivot in the front that looked like a really sturdy spot connected to the frame and on the back very straightforward just two on the axle i do like to have the load centered in the little cradle of these jack stands just because if it's on the edge i mean these are cast iron pieces and cast iron is brittle and they're cheap they could break i've put together a list here for you in the order that you should do this job i did not follow these steps and it made it a lot harder for me but here it is drain the transmission fluid number one then remove the drive shaft. Number three, remove the starter. Number four, remove things attached to the transmission. That's like the fuel lines have a bracket going to it. The reverse switch, the neutral switch, there's all kinds of other crap attached to it you wanna to try to get off. You can get some of that off later too. Five, disconnect the hydraulic line. I'll show you how to do that, it's really easy. Six, go after the transmission bolts. Now, just like in the list, the very first thing I did here was drain the transmission fluid. Unfortunately for me, I just changed this to GM Synchro Mesh fluid. It's like $60 worth of fluid here, so I'm trying to catch every drop because I'm putting it right back in it. I believe the main bolt is an 18 millimeter for this drain bolt. Um, I think I just use a crescent wrench, to be honest. The worst toll ever, but it works. Now, a really good tip here, this might seem really simple, but if there's wind blowing, you might just want to hold the pan up closer because the wind will blow your fluid all over the place. And once it's slowed down, I just let it drizzle for a little while. Okay, I realize I just totally lied to you. The very first thing you're going to want to do is get these bolts loose on the drive shaft before you even jack this truck up. With it on the ground, crawl under that thing and freaking get these four bolts broken loose on your drive shaft because you have no way to keep it still. Um, you can put it in gear, it kind of does, it kind of moves, it just makes it a pain. So just do that first before you even jack the thing up. Get these bolts, four bolts loose on the back of the drive shaft here. Here's a better view of the kind of crap that I had to put up with trying to get them loose after I had it on jack stands. And also, by the way, this is a um, 12 millimeter 12 point. Once you get those bolts out, just give it a few love taps there with the hammer and the drive shaft should come right out. Then all you got to do is slide it out of the transmission. No bolts or anything, just pulls right out of there. You'll need to remove the starter if you have any chance of getting this top middle bolt on these late model Rangers. First thing you need to do is disconnect the positive cable of your battery before you do any of this. To remove the starter, it's easier to go through the driver's side wheel well, and it makes it even easier if you take off the wheel. There are two wire connectors on this solenoid for the starter that you need to remove the positive cable and also the signal wire. Get those off. And then there's also a ground cable on the top right mounting bolt. These are weird kind of bolts. They, they hold clips on that hold wiring and then that, below that you take those off and then they have nuts you take off and then there'll be the ground wire. And then you can take that off and then you can actually, uh, 13 millimeter again, take out the stud that it's like a mounting bolt for the starter you'll see when you get into it after you get all that stuff off the starter should come right out so the next step is to disconnect this hydraulic line from the slave cylinder it has a little fitting that needs to get pressed in and some clutch kits come with a little tool that you can use to work it in but if you don't have that I use two screwdrivers and you can just take that and kind of push it in and it should pop right out now the next thing you need to do before we can start taking the transmission bolts out to remove it is remove the shifter. So you want to get your little cup holder console out. There's two screws in the front. Take those out. You can lift it off there then. And then there is a bolt that goes through the shifter. Well what you do is you take the nut off of the right side, loosen that up, and then you take that nut and put it on the left side. And what you tighten that up and it pulls this little pin out there. It's not a pin, but it's like a locking cam. Um, so it just kind of pulls it out of there. And once it's out, you just get it out all the way and then the whole shifter should come right off. 
So once that shifter's off, then you have another plate that you gotta remove this plastic thing. There's four like screws around it, just Phillips head, take that out. And then once you get that out, there's another plate that holds the actual shifter rod in that has three Torx heads, I believe they're T25 Torx heads, take those out and then you can pull the freaking shifter rod right out of there. Okay, so now you can get going taking out the transmission mounting bolts. There are 10 of them all the way around the transmission. And unfortunately, after 2004, 2005, they changed the bolt pattern. They added one right in the middle at the top. That took me three days to get to. I had to get a ratcheting combination wrench and go in over in the driver's side wheel well where you get the starter out. And just one click at a time is all the room you got with a ratcheting combination wrench. It's a 13 millimeters, they're all 13 millimeter. Um, so that, I, I didn't even end up putting that bolt back in. Nine of them are good enough, let's be honest. So, um, these, I mean, they're, they're easy to get off if you can get to them. If you got an earlier Ranger before 2004, 2005, it's a lot easier. They're, they're just two in the top on the left and right side and get right to them. For this, you'll need, the tools you'll need are ratchet, 13 millimeter socket wrench, extensions. I had some wobble extensions. Those come in handy. And obviously like the combination uh, ratcheting, combination wrench for that one bolt, definitely a big deal. The rest of them, not too bad to get to. There's a couple at the top, you'll find them. There's 10 of them. I only thought there were eight at first, but there's 10. Um, so if you can get all these out, what you do is really just leave a couple in there um, and until you're ready to support the transmission and then we'll remove the cross member and this is honestly really the hardest part that I found to doing this um, so if you don't feel comfortable working in tight space and trying to get these bolts out you know one click at a time for that top one then I would highly just recommend finding someone to do this job for three or four hundred bucks that would be a great deal and save you a whole lot of trouble Here's a picture I put together. The left one is the older style Ranger manual transmission. And then after 2004, 2005, I think, they changed it over to the right one. That's the one I got. I got a 2008. Um, and those two circles are the hard bolts to get to. Now the one on the left there really isn't that bad. You can get up there. Um, if you're close up to the front passenger wheel, you can get your arm right up there and get that out. The one circle to the right there though, that's the one you got to go in through the driver's side wheel well, um, past where the starter mounts, get your arm way up in there, somehow find the spot where to get the combination ratcheting wrench on it and get it out one click at a time because there's a bunch of wiring and hoses kind of blocking it. And that bolt right there is the one I just didn't put back in. Let's be honest, it's not a gasket seal. It's a 2.3 motor. Nine of those bolts more than enough to hold this transmission on. So I was to save myself the time. I didn't even put that one back on. I threw it away. All right, so what's going on now is I got the transmission supported in the back with this motorcycle jack and my grandpa's butcher block sitting up there. I just got a little bit of pressure on it, so it's kind of sitting on it. And then I got, I'm getting the bolts out of the cross member here. Just a couple bolts right up, right up in there. Get those two out. And then I think you gotta get this one out. There's one on the other side too. Both they're both 19 millimeters. All of these on the cross member here. And you take the cross member out with these three bolts on either side. So I got the transmission supported with this motorcycle jack here. It's a good choice. You could use some sort of rig up on a regular jack, or they make transmission jacks. Honestly, a transmission isn't as heavy as you think. I estimate it 60 or 70 pounds. Um, so it's not too critical. One good thing to point out here is that wear safety glasses whenever you're under a vehicle. There's all kinds of stuff falling off. Salt, rust, debris. Okay, now the video you're looking at right now, this was before I got that last bolt out of the top there. Um, so I was trying to get the transmission out, wasn't coming out, I didn't know why. I thought there were only eight and I had eight out. But um, in another YouTube video, guys like, oh, just wiggle a little bit, it'll come out. Well, even after I had everything out and all the bolts out and everything disconnected from it, it was no just wiggle it and come out you gotta really yank on this thing and uh, it's kind of wedged in there it's it, you know it's a lot more work than some of these other how-to videos are trying to say it is um, but it still comes out once you get all the bolts out it'll come out on the, the jack um, 
pull it out. It was, all you can, you got to fight it, get it on the jack, and lower it down. Now, once you do finally get the transmission out, congratulations. The easiest thing to do in this whole procedure is swap out the slave cylinder. There's two bolts. Take those out, pull the whole thing out, put the new one in, put the two bolts back in, and help make sure you got the release bearing on there, and that's it. So here's what you'll be looking at attached to the engine. You got your pressure plate, your clutch, and your flywheel. The first thing I did, I got a little keyway with my clutch kit from eBay. I put that in there because that kind of like centers up your clutch. It'll hold it in there when we remove the pressure plate. So it doesn't like fall down prematurely. There are six, I believe, 10 millimeter bolts around the pressure plate that hold it to the flywheel. Take those out and then that uh, the pressure plate and your clutch should come right off. Now my whole problem with my clutch was the stupid little needle bearing. It, it's actually called the pilot bearing. It's inside the end of the crank. It's pressed in there and it supports the input shaft. The very end of the input shaft goes in there. So what happened is it disintegrated in my clutch and it was making all kinds of scratching, grinding noises. It kind of locked up my clutch for a minute and that's what was making it act funny. My clutch wasn't even that war. The stupid bearing was the whole problem. So I had a real nightmare getting this bearing out. It was a two day process trying to remove this stupid thing. First thing I did, I tried the slice of bread method, which is you pound a piece of bread in there with a bolt the size of the hole. I used a five eighths inch bolt. It's supposed to push it back out, did not work. Then I tried a puller. I pulled on it for an hour, did not work. And then I tried some chisels. I tried to start chiseling it out. That didn't work. And then I removed the flywheel. I got my air compressor over there. I got my impact over there for no reason because it's not in the flywheel like I thought it was. It's in the crankshaft. Stupid little bearing. Then I sprayed it with PB Blaster, let it sit overnight. Then my uncle brought his Dremel over the next day. Started Dremeling on it a little bit. It just tore up his bit. But apparently the heat from that uh, we pulled on it again, that, that heat plus the PB Blaster came out that time, finally, stupid bearing. So I got the new pilot bearing in, not hard at all, you just kind of tap it in there. And then I got the flywheel back on, if, it, if you're curious, you torque those bolts on the flywheel, 60 foot pounds. Then reassembling the clutch is really simple, you put the keyway in there to hold the clutch in the center, and then you put your pressure plate on, and then tighten it down, torque those to 25 or 30 foot pounds, those six bolts around the pressure plate. Then you just remove your little key tool here and you're ready to put your transmission back on. All right, so I really didn't get any video of this transmission going back on, but you really need another person to help you. I had my uncle help me get this thing back on and it really takes just a lot of wiggling and muscling. Even if you got a jack, it takes a lot of muscle trying to line it up, um, especially when you're laying on the ground, it sucks, it's uncomfortable. Um, one thing we found that helps if you wiggle the drive shaft or the output shaft of the transmission a little bit, try to line it up. And once you do finally get it back on, you can get a couple bolts threaded in there and then start tightening, up, tightening those up evenly on either side and it should pull it right in. In this video you're watching right here, I'm torquing these bolts. They get torqued to 50 foot pounds. So the ones you can get to torque them to 50 foot pounds. They are aluminum bolts, aluminum to aluminum, threads, everything. So you don't want to overdo it. So torque them to 50 foot pounds like I'm doing there. If you, the ones you can't get to, just get them hand tight. Uh, well, not hand tight, but with a th my 3 8 inch ratchet, get them pretty tight. Um, don't overdo it, that's for sure. Don't underdo it either. All right, so by this time, I got the cross member back on everything. It goes together 100 times easier than it comes apart, especially once you got the transmission back in. Uh, it's all cake from there. Just a matter of tightening bolts and everything. Here, I'm going to fill the transmission back up with fluid. I'm using the same fluid I pulled out of it just because it was fresh GM Synchro Mesh fluid that I put in there. Um, what you need, you need a transfer pump. They got those at Harbor Freight. I think you can find them cheaper if you have a Marks near you. They have they had a bunch for like five bucks. They're usually like eight bucks or eight or nine bucks at Harbor Freight. They work good though. I had to cut the hose a little shorter, kind of take up some room or cut off some slack from the hose of those. And then uh, you know you just pretty much pump the fluid back in the fill hole up on top of the transmission. Make sure the drain is tight. Make sure that drain bolt's tightened up before you fill it up. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you're doing this with fresh fluid, um, you could either measure out how much you put in there. I don't know the exact specs of what goes in there, but what I did when I originally filled this up is I just kept pumping it and then it kind of let me know when it was full, it just started flowing out of the fill tube. So that's how you know it's full. If it comes out of there, might be overfilled though by that time. But I left it like that, I drove it like that for a while and it seemed fine. Okay, so aside from assembling everything that you took apart and making sure you don't have any bolts left over, 
Um, except the one that I didn't put back in transmission. I threw that sucker away. The only thing you need to do from here to finish this thing up really is bleed that slave cylinder, that new slave cylinder. Um, there's a bleeder bolt up above the main connect tube. And if you, all you got to do to put that main hydraulic line back on is just push it in. I mean, it couldn't get any easier than that. You just pop it right in. That's good. Some of the kits come with a new O-ring you put on. I didn't, honestly. I just, the O-ring was fine. I just put it back in there and it's fine. But I tried gravity bleeding this first. So what that does is you open up the bolt. And I had my mom make sure that this freaking reservoir on the clutch is full at all times. Now, the gravity bleeding didn't go well. What, the, what gravity bleeding is, you just open up this bleed bolt, and it's supposed to bleed itself and just kind of drain out. Well, that didn't work so well. At first, I let it let it go. It started, fluid started coming out, but it wasn't really working that great. So the method that does work is you open up the bleed bolt, have someone push the clutch to the floor and hold it, and then you close the bleed bolt, and then they release the clutch, let it back out, and then you start that over again. So then you'll open the bleed bolt again, have them push it down and hold it to the floor, and then you close it when they're holding it to the floor, and then they pull it back up, and then keep doing that over again. I probably did it about eight times. Now I'm not so sure the classic bleeding method where people say, you know, open up the bolt and just pump the clutch, or the brake, whatever you're bleeding. I, I don't understand how that works, because I feel like it would just, you know, as you're pumping it, it would just suck your back in. So by closing it when it's completely pressed, it's going to be sure to suck fluid from the reservoir down um, instead of just back in the bleed bowl or wherever. As you see in here, I got fluid dripping everywhere. You could connect the line to that bleed bolt so that it drains down. Um, whatever, screw it, who cares? I don't even care. I just want to get this thing done at this point. Always keep the reservoir full of, of brake fluid. Use dot three brake fluid for the clutch reservoir. Same stuff, it's what you use and it's got to stay full. If you let it get low, you can get an air bubble trapped in the, the main line, you're screwed. Keep that reservoir full. All right, so here it is, all done. New clutch. Woo! Oh yeah, she runs. I only got two bolts in the starter right now because I kind of lost the one. I'll find it though, I'll get it back in there. Oh yeah, that clutch feels good. Get on the highway here. I'm shifting with my left hand because I got my right hand on the tripod over here because it's kind of wobbly. I think it's good now. We're getting on the highway right now though on the on ramp. This clutch feels pretty good. Honestly, it doesn't really feel any different than the last one. The last, the old clutch, the original clutch really wasn't wore out. But the pro whole problem was that pilot bearing. In, in fifth gear now. Not only do I only have two two bolts in the starter out of three, because I gotta find the other one. I only got eight of the ten transmission bolts in there right now, because I realized I had two left over instead of one that I was just planning on. So I gotta put that one back in there. It's not hard to get to. It's on the back, on the passenger side. Um, but the one in the top middle up there, it doesn't need to be there. I'm not even trying to put that thing back on one click at a time with a combination ratchet uh, wrench. Ratcheting combination wrench. No way. Forget it. It doesn't need it. It's not. If it was a gasket seal, then I'd be like, yeah, it probably needs to be there. Freaking six of those bolts would hold this thing on perfectly fine. And I got eight right now. I've been driving it, and it's fine. So, you know, whatever. Some things are just over-engineered, you know, they don't, someone sitting there at a desk on their AutoCAD just designed this stuff, they redesigned it obviously from the old transmission bolt pattern, still using 10 bolts, but they're like, oh, well, let, I need something to show my boss today, you know, so that I wasn't just in here playing Flappy Bird all day, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> well, Flappy Bird wasn't around when, uh, when I designed this in 2005 or whatever seems stupid. You know, let's just make it harder to get to. And it doesn't matter to them, because when they put it together, the whole transmission goes on the engine before they even put it in, so it doesn't matter. But they don't think about, you know, getting it out. So overall, I mean, this clutch seems great. It's got that nice little sandpapery sound when it first, first starts grabbing. 
new clutch. So, I mean, or when you just release it a little bit, it's got that little sandpaper sound. Not in here, I can't hear it, but if I got the window rolled down, you can hear it. It just goes all like, it's nice. We use the old flywheel, it's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Overall, I'm pretty happy about this. I'm glad, uh, glad it came out. I'm glad I got, got this done. It took me a week and a half, man. Just three days, three freaking days for that to get that bolt out of the top middle of that transmission. I tried everything. I had to go get the right combination, ratcheting combination wrench or what you need for that 13 millimeter.